What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another episode of Switch Tutorials. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Android on your jailbroken Nintendo Switch. So in the previous episode, we looked at installing Ubuntu, a Linux operating system on the Switch, so you could dock your Switch and connect a keyboard and mouse so that you could have it as an actual desktop computer, which was pretty awesome. Um, Android is a bit different with Ubuntu. It worked great in docked mode, but doesn't work that great in portable mode because, you know, it's not really designed for the touch screen. You know, the icons are small. It doesn't register the touches properly sometimes. So um, it's not perfect. Whereas Android works much better in portable mode because, of course, it's designed for a touch screen. Um, so it'll work a lot better. Plus, uh, with Android, um, obviously, you can download apps from the Google Play Store. You can download, you know, media streaming apps like YouTube and Netflix and uh, have a proper web browser. Um, plus, you can also stream games from your computer to your Switch uh, as if your Switch was like a NVIDIA Shield. Um, and then use, you know, the Joy-Cons to actually play your PC games in portable mode on your switch which is pretty awesome so a good few reasons to install android there um, all the previous episodes are linked in the video description there's a bit shoot playlist link that has all the episodes plus um, a youtube playlist link which has most of the episodes but one or two episodes are uh, only available on bit shoot um, because they were removed from youtube i'm not going to get into that but yeah anyway so um it's a good idea to have two sd cards at least um to have android because then you can put android on one sd card and then leave the other SD card for the normal Switch operating system. That way you can just switch between Android and the normal operating system or custom firmware by just swapping the SD cards around. But you know, you can you can still do it if you only have one SD card. Just make sure you back up all your files first. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is head over to this website, switchroot.org and click this button here to download. Um, and then go to Android and then select the image file that corresponds to the size of your SD card. So if you have a 128 gigabyte SD card, select that image. If you have, you know, a 16 gig SD card, select the 16 gig image. Even if you have a larger than 128 gigabyte SD card, then just select the 128 gigabyte image, download that. And then optionally, you can also download uh, shieldifier.zip or shieldifier.zip which is to make your Switch identify as an NVIDIA Shield tablet so that you can use uh, game streaming if you have an NVIDIA graphics card to stream your PC games to your Switch. Um, so that's handy. So if you want that, then just go ahead and download it. Then you can head into the extras folder and you can download the fixjoycon.zip. Again, if you're planning to play any games on your Switch while you're on Android, you want to download that because when you sync your Joy-Cons to uh, your, your Switch on Android, there's an issue where the buttons are not correctly mapped. So you scroll left and right and it will scroll up and down instead of left and right. Whereas if you install this zip file, it will correctly uh, map the buttons properly. So you can download that one as well. Then optionally, you can also download OpenG apps. Um, if you go to opengapps.org. So this just installs a bunch of um, like Google apps like YouTube and you know Google Maps and Translate and Gmail and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, pre-installs to your switch so rather than having to install these apps individually so if you want to download this then select the arm 64 version select version 8.1 and then you can select pretty much whichever variant you want you know you can go with the stock version for um, to install the majority of things or if you just want to you know go for the the minimal installation you can select the nano version and then just click the download button to download it so as you can see i've got them all here downloaded so next you'll need a um, program to write the image. So you can either use Etcher or Rufus. Um, either one will work, you know, just I'll, put, I'll link them both in the description. We used Rufus last time to install the Ubuntu image. So I'm gonna use Etcher this time um, to install the Android one. So plug your SD card into your computer and make sure that it's already formatted. If it's a fresh SD card, make sure you have it formatted in, you know, FAT32 or XFAT format because it needs to be in that format when you mount the image because it has to assign a drive letter to the boot partition and we need access to the boot partition to install the zip files and if your drive is unformatted and then you mount the image to it um, it's it's not going to assign a drive letter to the boot partition or the bootloader partition and that's going to cause a problem because even if you try and assign a drive letter to it after the fact it it won't work because it's a protected partition and it won't allow you to mount the volume. So that just 
causes a bunch of issues. So what you want to do is just make sure the SD card is already formatted in FAT32 or XFAT format, and then we can mount the image to it in Etcher or Rufus. So with Etcher here, we'll open this up and we're going to select image. We're going to select our Android image here, click open. And then we're going to select our target, uh, which is going to be, of course, our SD card. And then you just click continue and then click flash and it'll start formatting the partition and writing uh, the Android image to it. Now, one thing you'll notice right away to avoid that problem from happening, you can see that the SD card still shows up in here as drive letter J, even though it's not accessible right now because it's being formatted. Um, that's what you want. If it still shows up in here, then that's a good sign. That means that um, it will probably, once it's finished flashing, uh, we should have access to the to that drive, that partition. So it looks like it's going quite quickly, but what will happen is once it hits about 83 or 84%, it will look like it's frozen, uh, but it's not. It's just going up very, very slowly. So it will potentially take a couple of hours to, to flash this, especially if you're doing the big 128 gigabyte uh, image. You know, if you're just doing like the 16 gig one, it probably won't take that long, but the 128 gigabyte one that we're flashing right now, it's gonna take a long time. So when it hits the 83% and it looks like it's, it's stuck on 83%, it's not, it's just gonna take some time. Okay, so once Etcher finishes flashing, um, it'll do a verification step. You can just cancel that if you like, it's not required. Um, and then you should have this uh, two gigabyte partition on your SD card right here. Now. So this contains the bootloader to actually boot into Android. And we're also gonna add our zip files in here. So all the different zip files we want to install for OpenG apps, the fixed Joy-Con, and the um, NVIDIA Shield zip file. We're gonna copy those straight into the root of this two gigabyte partition. Okay, so once you've got those files copied over, you can unplug your SD card and plug it into your Nintendo Switch. And of course, we're gonna to want to inject our payload. So I'm gonna grab, of course, Tegra RCM GUI. So we're gonna open this up. You know, you can use your payload injector dongle if you have like an RCM loader or something similar. Okay, so then we're going to inject the latest version of the Heketa payload. So just load it in here and inject it once you boot your switch into RCM mode, which I'm not going to show you how to do. Otherwise, Nintendo's going to hit me with a circumvention of technological protection measures bullcrap strike. So um, just you have to figure it out yourself how to boot into RCM mode. But if we boot into RCM mode, we can then inject our Heketa payload. So here we are booted into the Heketa menu a kind of new interface. So if we go to more configs, you can launch your Android operating system by just selecting switch root Android, but that's not what we want to do. We want to install those zip files first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down the volume up button and then select switch root Android and then keep the volume up button held down until you get into the TWRP menu. Okay, so once you get into the TWRP menu, you're going to swipe to allow modification. So what we want to do is we want to select mount. And then, you know, if this doesn't come up, just select back and then it should pop up. We want to select uh, system, make sure that's uh, ticked. And then we also want vendor to be ticked as well. As you can see, touchscreen, again, very temperamental. But there we go, we've got that all selected. So now we'll go back, go back into mount again, just double check they're all selected. And then we're going to go and install and then select storage in the bottom right here. Select micro SD card, the top option. That's that two gigabyte partition um, with the bootloader that has the zip files on it. So our zip files show up here. And then we're just going to select um, the zip files we want to install. So first one is a uh, fixed joycon.zip. So we'll select that, swipe along and then just let it install. There you go. It takes like a split second. Then we'll go back. Then we'll do the bottom one for the NVIDIA Shield. So we'll install that zip file. Again, that'll just take a couple seconds. Then we can go back. And then finally, we've got OpenG apps. So we're gonna select that and swipe along. This one's gonna take a while to install because you know it installs a bunch of, of uh, Google apps onto your, onto your Switch. So it's gonna, yeah, it's got quite a few apps to install here. So this is gonna take some time. So just wait for this to complete. Okay, so there we go. So now that we have all the zip files installed, we can just select the reboot system option and then just drag this along to reboot. And that will reboot you back into RCM mode 
But then we have to, of course, re-inject the Haketa payload again. And then we can just, this time we can just go to more configs and select switch root Android normally without holding any buttons down or anything. And it should boot us into Android. Now, the first time you boot this, it might not uh, boot successfully the first time. I have had it where um, it just stays on this blank screen. Um, so give it maybe a minute or so. You should get the little Android um, animation, like loading animation. Uh, yep, there you go. That's it right there. So it worked fine for me. But I have had it before where I've tried to um, run it and it's just gets stuck on a black screen. In which case, you just have to reboot the system by holding in the power button and then re-injecting the payload again and just try again. After, you know, it, it will definitely work after a couple of tries. And that's just for the installation. When you next go to boot up Android after it's been like fully set up and installed, it should boot perfectly first time, no problem. So then we just have to go through the generic Android setup when you're installing it for the first time. So, you know, stuff like entering your Wi-Fi, selecting your language, setting up your Google account. Then you'll get the Lineage OS features popping up. So we'll just go next and start. Okay, so there we go. We've got Android running properly here on our Switch. As you can see, there's all our different apps that are installed from OpenG apps. You've got YouTube there, a bunch of others, Chrome, Maps, all that kind of stuff. So it's all working. So before we kind of finish the video, I want to show you guys uh, how to pair your Joy-Cons and how to stream your PC games to your Switch so you can actually, you know, play your PC games in portable mode on your Switch. It's a pretty cool feature. So first of all, for pairing the Joy-Cons, if we take out the right Joy-Con here and I swipe down for the settings, click the little settings cog and then go to um, Bluetooth or connected devices and then go to Bluetooth. As you can see, I've already got the left Joy-Con already paired. So I'm gonna pair a new device, and then I'm gonna hold down the sync button on the Joy-Con there till the lights flash. So it's just this little black button there, just hold that down. And then it'll appear, just select it. Pairing Joy-Con. And there you go, it's now paired. So we can go back, exit out of this. Plug this back in and we're good. So that should now work. In fact, if I go back into the settings, you can see that if I use the left Joy-Con uh, to scroll up and down, you can see that that is working. And because we installed the fixed Joy-Con, it works properly, it's correctly mapped. Otherwise, if I had scrolled up and down, it would scroll left and right uh, instead. So now we can go ahead and install a game streaming app. So if I open up uh, Google Play, the Google Play Store, and then search for uh, Moonlight, so this is a good streaming app to use, so I'm going to go ahead and install this. Okay, so there we go, as you can see it's installed, so I'm just going to close out of all of this stuff, and now open Moonlight. Okay, so then it's searching for PCs, and it's found my computer, because I do have, let me just show you this on the computer real quick, I do have GeForce Experience, you need GeForce Experience for this. And then if you go to the settings in GeForce Experience and go to Shield and make sure Game Stream is enabled. So then your computer should show up there in Moonlight so I can select it. And then I'll have to pair it. So I have to enter that um, pin number on my computer. So I'll just type in that pin number and click connect. And there we go, it's now paired. And now the apps list will be populated with all my PC games that are streamable. So there's quite a few there. So I'll just select uh, Killing Floor 2 because I already have that game uh, okay, so my capture card just stopped recording when I launched the game stream, but as you can see from the footage here, it is definitely working. You can play your games, your PC games, on your Switch using Android in portable mode. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. Obviously there's some issues, there's some lag and stuff you can see from the, from the footage, but I mean that's mainly because I have the Switch as far away from my router as possible, so um, I'm getting a very weak signal. You can also adjust the bitrate to uh, get better performance out of it. But yeah, it does work. So anyway, that is how you run Android on your jailbroken Nintendo Switch. Hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and stay tuned for future videos uh, on the Nintendo Switch.